Welcome to the Purpose Podcast. My name is Rachel. I'm here with my husband, Zach, and we are so excited to spend a little bit of time with you because we believe that God has created you with a purpose, on purpose, for right now, and we want to help you walk in it. So, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's almost here. It's here. I wonder if you have all your gifts purchased, the people who are listening to this at this point, because you are cutting it close. Yeah, it is. I have been known to get my last few things closer to Christmas. And now, is Amazon is Amazon going to be able to get things here at this point? Now, last year, they made some promises that they did not keep. Hmm. I Anything past the 17th. So now, I feel like if you're ordering from Amazon, even though they say it's prime, it's not getting there by Saturday. It's not happening. Hmm. You Free imagine working in that industry right now. Well, if you're listening and you do, all of our UPS, postal workers, Amazon people, Which we are probably so, a huge, probably a huge contingency yeah, of our audience. So grateful for you. It's like what uh, in New Girl when uh, Nick Miller thought all of his people reading his books were all dock workers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did see this thing, though, for um, something you should do for people who are delivering um, gifts and stuff to your house. And people are just leaving like... Um, buckets by their mailboxes or by their front door. So if you are like last minute getting stuff, people are slammed. But you can do just That's little cool. things. They're putting like, you know, trail mix or hot cocoa mix in like little baggies and some stuff together for them just to say thank you. Yeah, that is a crazy thing. Well, again, Merry Christmas. We are so excited that you have taken some time to be with us. And uh, whether you are, you have some time coming up uh, soon where you're off, um, or, you know, er everybody has different uh, seasons, What's that lo what that looks like, depending on what you mm -hmm. do professionally and your family and all that kind of stuff. But we, what we want to do is give you some, uh, some focus for this time while you are off, while you, uh, you should have a little bit more free time. Hopefully, you have some more free time. Something that we're bad about doing is whenever uh, these seasons, like, Thanksgiving wasn't too long ago, and I took Monday, Tuesday off, and then we were off that whole week, and we filled, it felt like, every day. Yeah, we worked Monday, Tuesday and on so, something else. Yeah, and then and then by the time, literally, I was laying down on Sunday night, and I was like, I think I'm more tired right now than I am after a normal work week, you know, going into the next week. And so I just want to encourage you, what a what a big deal. And, you know, last, last week we talked about how to honor God in this season— uh, well, just to slow down into what we're going to talk about today, which is paramount for you to walk in your purpose, for you to win your world, for you to be all, really in every facet, you have to do what we're going to talk about today, for you to be successful. Um, it, that's spiritually, emotionally, relationally, physically, in every way that you want to make progress, you have to be successful in this. And so what we're talking about today is reflection. It sounds so boring. <laughs> I know. I love it so much. What do you mean boring? Reflection, for me personally, it I feel bad when I reflect because I know like all the stuff that I didn't do that I wanted to do, especially when we get to this time of year because I made a growth plan. I did not, which your dad, which your dad always like, he always says, hey, I've never hit everything on a growth plan ever. And that's the purpose is not to like, it's not the perfect plan, it's the growth plan. So it's just to grow. So you're probably not going to do everything. But I just feel, I feel bad. I'm always sad. I'm like, I didn't do everything I wanted to do well, or really maybe anything. Maybe that's you. You're like, I didn't do anything on the growth plan. <laughs> if you are a, if you are a Rachel right now, um, in this moment, we think about reflection. We're going to talk about it um, in detail, uh, but let's all remember Romans 8.1. There, no there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And you, know, you think about God, He is a good, good Father. Um, and so even if my kids don't accomplish something that I want them to, something that I ask them to, uh, when it's time at the end of the day uh, for them to come uh, at at nighttime mm -hmm. at Bible time, uh, the thought that I wouldn't still want to hold them before they went to bed, talk about the day it would, would be crazy. It'd mm -hmm. be crazy. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that stuff will still be there tomorrow. Just like for a lot of us, there's stuff that'll be there for us to do in this next year. Um, and so, but I really do think, um, joking aside from what Rachel said, uh, I, I really do believe that, um, that, that is a, 
lie of the enemy, mm-hmm. you know? And so guilt and condem- guilt and condemnation are not from God. Conviction is, you know, the need to repent is, uh, but guilt and condemnation are not from God. Actually, maybe a good thing for us before we even get rolling, um, you, you know, a couple of years ago, you really were delivered from a, oh, yeah. uh, an, a kind of an oppression of shame, yeah. uh, which goes in with guilt and mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff. Maybe if when you hear the word reflection, if shame or guilt come to mind and you reflect on that feeling, if that's a feeling that you've always had, maybe you have a stronghold you need some deliverance from. Yeah. And I remember, I mean, I've shared this story before, but really it was, I was out of town and I was just reading scripture and I just felt like the Lord wanted me to read. And so I was reading and journaling and I was brought to the scripture where um, Paul writes for, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And um, it was super weird. I've never like stopped and really reflected on that at all. And I just felt like I needed to stop. And I was like, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And the Lord was like, I want you to know like what is ashamed mean. And so I looked at feeling foolish or, and so I start to like look up what shame means. And I'm like, oh, but I feel shame all the time. Like about, um, I mean, at everything I do, this is like blanketed in this feeling of shame, of foolishness. And um, I, I just said, Lord, I don't, I don't want to feel shame anymore. Like I'm not supposed to feel, I, I'm reading this scripture and it's just like the Lord's like, hey, I didn't design you to live in shame you're not supposed to be ashamed of a gospel of like living as a daughter of the most high king. And so in that moment, it was super weird, but I just was like, Lord, I don't want to be ashamed. And it was like, it was just like lifted off of me. And I still like had to retrain my mind. And so I still do like, and one of those things I do is in these seasons of reflection, I remind myself, I say these things out loud that I'm a daughter of the King. I can only bring my piece of heaven to earth. I'm not responsible for other people's pieces of heaven. Hey, God has grace for me. There's mercy for me. I, for all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God, I am in the process of being made like Christ. I am you know, and those are all things that I will say out loud. I'll remind myself of who I am as I work through these because shame has kept me from going to Jesus so mm. often. I know I need to be with Christ, but I'm so ashamed. I'm embarrassed um, and feel like that over things I've done or things I didn't do that I know I needed to do. And that's a lot of what I experienced when I reflect. It's not so much the things I have done. It's the things I didn't do that I know God set aside for me to do. And I just feel overwhelmed by that. So I am super grateful for freedom from that, but I have to really practice and keep, stay vigilant. Otherwise, shame, because it, it was such a familiar voice in my life for so long, I will turn to and listen to the voice of shame and not the voice of God. That's right. So it's a big deal. Reflection is massive, um, but and, and we could talk a lot about what keeps us from it, but I just want to encourage you, if you're listening to this, then you're, you probably have a, a passion for growth at some level. And, you know, you, you've heard uh, that, um, you know, reflection is the, is the greatest teacher or experience, experience. Uh-huh. is experience is the greatest teacher. And my dad was really passionate about this. And I've become really passionate about this, that um, experience isn't the greatest teacher uh, evaluated or reflected on experience is the greatest teacher. Mm-hmm. You can have, uh, you know, as, as we interview people in ministry and, and even like marriage and things like that. You know, some people put on their resume, they have 20 years of experience, and then you ask a couple questions, and they really have, they have one year of experience, and they've just repeated the same thing for 20 times. 20 years. Yeah. And so I would actually encourage you, uh, and we're going to talk about some specific areas of reflection, um, but what I want to encourage you is that if you just sit there and think about your walk with God— you think about like your your relationships, whether you're if you're a young adult with your friends or if you're married with your spouse mm-hmm. or with your kids. Um, as you reflect on that, are you just doing the same thing over and over again? Actually, we forgot we were going to title this podcast. Are you insane? Are you insane? Um, are you insane? Uh, but and, and the reason for that, you know, you, we've all heard um, uh, what's the name Albert Einstein. You know, the whole the. Uh, the definition of insanity mm-hmm. is Just to, doing the same thing over and over, same expecting thing, a different exactly, result. Exactly, over and over, expecting a different result. And and the only way that you're not going to do that, uh, especially when it comes to the more complicated facets of life, like spirituality or relationships or things like that, is going to be to reflect and make an intentional decision to make a different 
uh, decision. And so um, it's huge. And again, uh, one of the ways that you can do it without shame, and Rachel talked about that, but remember, you are not what you do. Now, it's not about the do, it's about the who. And so, um, and maybe that's part of what you need to be intentional to reflect on is to remember whose you are. We'll talk about growth plans and probably add uh, some of that in there for you. Uh, but one of the things, one, uh, and actually, let me, let me give you a scripture and then we'll, and then we'll talk about some, some practical things. But Deuteronomy 32, 7 says, remember the days of old, consider the years of all generations, ask your father and he will inform you, your elders, and they will tell you. Um, and I, I would even give you an example. Uh, of, well, what's happening? So like, in why is this there? You know, Moses is telling this generation to go back and to ask about what God has done so yeah. that they would learn who God is, how faithful he is, and how to honor and obey him. So God's telling us it's important that you reflect upon mm -hmm. the things that you've experienced and what you learned from that experience, not just for yourself, but also for the generations that are going to come after you. That's right. And, and if anybody didn't need to reflect, if anybody would have been fine, it had been Jesus. But you read all throughout. Uh, somebody told me the other day uh, they were— uh, they had a friend who thought homosexuality isn't a sin, things like that. And we were discussing it, and they were like, yeah, they said that the Old Testament doesn't apply anymore. And I was like, well, somebody should tell Jesus that because uh, he used it all the time. you know. And so like even Jesus, Jesus, he, he quoted the Old Testament. Now, he was fulfilling those prophecies, yeah. but uh, so e even he reflected on you. But either way. Uh, one, one of the best ways we can do this um, and just kind of a common thing that we'll ask is to ask questions. And so like, so one of the best ways to reflect is to ask questions. And so this, this scripture gives us uh, specific instructions to ask your father. And some of you guys, maybe, maybe that's not going to need to be a biblical or a biological father. It's going to be, need to be a, a spiritual father or mother, um, and he will inform you. Ask your elders. Ask somebody who's been there before, or somebody who's watched you. Uh, but and and they will tell you. But it's also not just other people; it's yourself. And so we want to take time to ask penetrating questions around the things that we want to uh, reflect on. Yeah. So one of the things that we like to do is um, go back to our growth plan that we made. If you made a growth plan, if you've never done that, then no shade. Um, but we want to go back and say, hey, when I made that plan, when, you know, what did I actually accomplish? Like actually slowing down enough to saying, hey, what of this, what of the plan that I made did I accomplish? Where did I win? And then where didn't I win that I wanted to and what kept me from achieving what I set out to achieve? Yeah, and we we can't stress enough the power of a the the power of a growth plan. Um, and we'll continue to talk about it. It's it's a big deal. Uh, but I read a book. I guess I think it was this year. <clears throat> and I've I've, I've said this because it really impacted me. <clears throat> a book by Ed Milet, and it's called The Power of One More. And he was talking about these studies that were done, and the uh, the more frequently somebody reviewed their goals, the more successful they were. And so this, primarily, this was uh, in business and leadership, but it does it does transfer. And so the more that these people were affected on their goals financially, relationally, spiritually, mm -hmm. the more successful they were. Now, is there anything magical about reading? Uh, obviously, a number that you're familiar with because they. They talked about annually, um, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily, right? Which the scope there is massive. So, um, mm -hmm. and we're making some assumptions right now that you've set some some goals and some boundaries, uh, which again, I, that, that probably may be a, a silly assumption to make. Some of you guys are new to Jesus and things like that. And we'll talk more about growth plans. Um, and and, and the, we have some previous episodes, but we'll talk more about it because it's always evolving. It's a big deal. But what makes, what makes people more successful the more they view it is because they are reflecting on what they're doing and how they're living in comparison with what they said they wanted to do. And I believe the reason that people are more successful the more frequently 
they view the goal or the commitments that they made is because it's a shorter time to try to reflect. Mm -hmm. And so like instead of trying to reflect on a whole year or a whole quarter or even a whole month, you're reflecting on a week or a day. Like that, for me, whenever I'm crushing my growth plan and I'm really loving people at my best, like like my, like my what I believe to be the best I have to offer is whenever I am reviewing mine and their goals, commitments, plans on a, on a weekly basis. Yeah. So um, what are some of the questions that you're asking yourself when you're reflecting? So you have like the, if, if you made, which maybe I should, I should pull my growth plan up and, and use that specifically, but there's the, there's, Hey, am I, am I on track to do this? So like uh, my Bible reading, I'm going to do my Bible reading. I'm going to do my Bible reading plan in a year. And then I'm going to right this year, I'm doing the New Testament once a month. So, and I, this isn't, some people are really going to jive with this and some people really won't. I don't know why I just said the word jive, but it did and I'm sticking to it. Um, but, uh, but in other people, this won't be quite where you're at, but it, this is, this is a, this is just a part of being a Christ follower. Right. Accountability. Mm -hmm. And so there's the first question of, am I doing what I said I was going to do? Right? So I, am, 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 I, am I doing it? Am I walking in it? And then the follow-up question would be, why? And not just why am I not, but like, why am I? Like if, I, if in my prayer time, so like if I'm, if I'm journaling my five days a week and stuff like that, why? Like, why is that? Like, is there... Um, so when, so the first question is, Hey, am I, am I doing it? Why, why am I doing it? Why am I not doing it? And if you find something that you're not, you're not doing it, then I would, I would share that just like that passage said, talk to your fathers, talk to your elders. I would share the things that are holding me back from doing it. That way I'd have some accountability and some help and support. Uh, but then, so I would ask, am I doing it? Why am I doing it? Why am I not doing it? And then, and then what's the, what's the result of it? So like, if I'm, if I'm not doing it, what's happening? So if I'm not, just, again, to say spiritual, if I'm not um, having my Bible time, if I'm not having my prayer time, then I know that my intimacy with God, with the Holy Spirit is less. My mm -hmm. sensitivity to being used by Him, probably my purity, like those things are, regressing like mm -hmm. th those things aren't static they're either moving forward or moving backwards and you know that because you have reflected on seasons where it wasn't so you saw the effect of not doing this thing and i think that's one of the things that's helpful is that when you reflect on it and you get to that point you're even talking about hey i know things as a result of doing this for years, of going back and reflecting. I know there are things that work and things that don't. So when you see like a why not or why, you can even look to rhythms that have shifted or um, schedules that changed or people that are in your life and go back. You can even drill down even more specifically, hey, what's helping me walk in sanctification? What are some things that work best for me and my family for us to honor God? And sometimes that is simply something like, hey, we changed the way you know, you might have, so for us, we had a drastic change this year in homeschooling. We made a shift um, in the fall and that's changed some things for us. And some of that was helpful. There are some things, but there are also some things that hindered some other ways in, in um, particularly my schedule. And so going back and saying, hey, these are the things that have changed and here's how it helped and here's how it hindered. And so now I have to go with that information in hand and evaluate what I'm going to do next as yeah. a result. Again, I, I can't stress the importance of accountability to other people mm -hmm. in this. It's just it's just massive. And again, like this, this is a this is a pretty simple um thing, you know, and so something even, maybe even pre, like we talked about, hey, what are the questions that I'm asking when I'm looking? Um, but something I think even before that is, and, you know, we talked about, hey, people are more successful whenever they view their goals mm -hmm. on a more frequent basis. Um, and and I, I would just encourage you, don't be a renter, like be an owner uh, of, of your growth. And so like, you know, you, you have if you work somewhere and you're not hyper passionate about it and you're just going and you're 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 collecting a check and, and you're you're doing that stuff, you know, 
all that. There's a difference between doing that and then like you showing up and being like, I, I want this place to be successful. Like I want it to, I want it to grow. I want it to do like all, all that it can do. And I just want to encourage you, like no one should care more about your growth than you. And maybe that's something to reflect on. Like if you don't care about your growth as a, a man or woman of God, as a, um, as a husband, as a wife, as a, as a student, like wherever you're at, like, like why is that? When you can ask God, for revelation in these things, because God knows you. He knows your thoughts. He knows your heart. You know, um, David says in the Psalms, search me, Lord, and mm-hmm. know me. Re- like he asks God to reveal to him the things that are in him that are in opposition to God's will. And God will tell you, he will give you revelation about what it is, whether it's a lie or there's something you haven't laid down. When you're like, hey, I don't know why I'm not doing When you ask the question why, I think a lot of us get you know, we get real internal and we just make it this big thing. We can't come up with a single answer, but if you'll ask God, he is faithful and he loves to talk to us. Yeah. So if we'll listen, take the time to stop and listen, he will speak. I would ask, how long do you spend reflect? If you say, Hey, maybe this is the first time I've ever reflected on what I'm doing and how my life is being lived. How long would you say you need to reflect? Well, I think that this leads to something great. So first of all, I would say, just if I could say this before, you have to have a time where you do it. And so like anything that matters to us, I like the whole thing, like we measure our treasure. Like if if you have something that matters to you, you you have a time you do it, right? So like that, like you, you, if you have a show you like or whatever, like you make sure you – get the kids to bed, you get off this, you get off that. Or if you have a YouTube channel you have to follow, like you set the notification, like you have a time, like you're, you know, like that video comes out on Monday. I can't wait to watch it, whatever mm-hmm. it might be. Um, and so I, I would say like, it's, this is important enough to have a time for it. So on Monday, after, after my quiet time, before I go into sermon prep, I do my, my review preview, my reflection on the things I said I was going to do last week and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so I think there's a, it's, it's paramount to have a time for it. We're about to start a new year. Like, what a great thing to start. Like, what, when is that for you? Uh, but if, if you're going back to your question, hey, if somebody was just now starting on reflection, um, here is where I would start, is what is the single thing, if improved on, would make the biggest difference in your life? So what is the single thing, if it was improved on, would make the biggest difference in your life? And some of you, just if we could be super candid, some of you guys, your walk with God is just okay. Like it's like it's like a six or a seven, but your physical health is like a two. And you're miserable and you're unhappy. And it's like, hey, the biggest thing I could do is I could continue like with what I'm doing my walk with God, but I could really hammer down on getting in better shape. Mm-hmm. Or like, hey, my walk with God is pretty good. It's like a seven. Like I'm, I'm doing pretty well. But my marriage is like, is or, or my relationships or my purity is is garbage. Like, mm-hmm. well, that's the most important thing, right? Memorize a thousand verses next year and get a divorce, and the Lord is not pleased, mm. right? And so what? And so you talk about reflection. So what? Um, if improved, would make the greatest difference in your life today. And that's where I would start reflecting. So even if your growth plan was one sentence, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm going in, uh, around whatever that thing is, that's a big deal. You know, that's a big deal. And like you said, the Lord the Lord is so gracious to us, but also like you, we're, we're gifted people. Like, and when I say we, I'm not talking about me and you, I'm talking about everybody listening. Like, it, biblically, you are gifted. Psalm 139, he puts you together piece by yeah. piece while you were inside your mom. Or Ephesians 2.10, you're his craftsmanship, his masterpiece, made on purpose, with a purpose. Like, he has um, Ephesians 3.20. Like, there, it, God can do through us, uh, through the power of God in us, exceedingly abundantly more than we ever thought or imagined. And so get proficient at spending time with the Lord in reflection and obeying. Like, I, I think that's, that's, the, that's the biggest thing. You look back in the Bible at these, at these monumental miracles, and they come back to just simple acts of obedience. Yeah. Well, another way that we reflect on things is when God does do something. So we actually have a jar. It's not a jar anymore. It's like a big, giant 
container um, of rocks that mm-hmm. we've chosen. It's a memorial to the Lord of the things that he's done. And so every time a miracle, we experience a miracle or God does something, we write it on a rock and we put it inside of a jar and it's in our living room. And when um, we like, and when we look at that, we reflect upon, we are reminded of all of the things that God has done. And one of the things that's super great is when you reflect on not just what you're doing, which is great. We want to make sure that we're honoring, obeying God, but we also want to reflect on the things that God has done. Mm -hmm. And we forget so quickly how he has provided and what we prayed for. And, um, you know, you mentioned this and we had talked about this a little bit. There was a guy, uh, or well, when Peter prayed and he asked Jesus, um, to come out on the water, it wasn't Jesus idea for Peter to come out on the water. It was Peter who told, if you are Jesus, call me out on the water. And so Jesus calls him out on the water. He's walking on the water. So he got what he asked for, which was to come and experience and walk on the water with Jesus. And the second he got his prayer request answered, he took his eyes off Jesus and he started to sink. And what a lot of times we ask God for the blessing, we ask God for provision, we ask God for revelation, we get from him what we needed, what our soul needed, what our spirit needed. And then because we never stop and reflect, we forget what God has done and our eyes are taken off of heaven and the things of the kingdom. And we are, we're distracted by the things of the world. And because we lack time to look back on what we've done and what God's done, we're missing out on living heaven here on earth. That's right. And there's just, there's just so much. I I think it's one of the things that um, I'm so passionate about. I know we're, we're so passionate about is, and I, I say it, how, how I say it is just kind of raw, so I, I, it's not a big deal. But seeing people li- live so below their kingdom potential mm-hmm. just so bothers me, you know. And the the Holy Spirit, we were given the Holy Spirit to live in us. The, the uh, a third part of the Trinity, part of God, you know, God lives in us. And we get so distracted and we get so all all these things that are pulling us away and pulling our minds away, and that's part of the reason why I'm so passionate about reflection. And you know, at Faith Promise, you know where where we lead, you know, I'll, I talk a lot about it. we. we it, it's called a check in, your review, preview, and people think that I care about that because of uh, their their goals getting done. And I was doing this, but it's not. It's 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 like what maybe I bring up every episode now. It's the it's that at some point we'll all stand before him. Well, all stand before him. And uh, I read the other day, um, this guy, whenever he reflects what he does, um, I, don't think, I, I don't think it's that pray like monks, live like fools book. I forgot where it was. But he says what he does is he imagines bringing his life before the judgment seat of God, bringing his life before it, and allowing the Lord to, uh, to burn up what what is not having eternal impact. Mm. And then him being okay with letting that those things go in his physical life because they're not serving the eternal purpose that he was created for, thought of at the beginning of the world for. Mm. Um, but I, I just think the busyness and the rat race and all that stuff is such a deception from the enemy. Um, and part of why we feel these strong feelings of shame or guilt or condemnation or uh, wh- whatever whatever the feeling may be is because if men and women of God reflected, saw like, okay, I'm on my way to the whole Second Corinthians 5.10 of standing before the Lord and giving account for the things I did and did not do while in the body, both good and bad, that... I'm I'm not I'm gonna be in a bind. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm gonna stand there. So that's why I'm so passionate about us reflecting. It's not checking off a box. You know, it's not it, it, it I'm you know, on the Enneagram, which I know some people think it's from the devil now. I'm a three. I like to perform, I get that. But the the desire of my heart around reflection is that I mean, it to think about the future for a second. You know, if he if we set a fi- financial planner down you know, and talked, mm-hmm. asked him to talk, her talk about people's financial flu- future, they would beg them to plan. Yeah. They would beg them to put stuff in your 401k. They would beg them to plan for retirement. They would beg them to do that. And so we're begging you. We're begging you to reflect on your life 
And we're begging you, and not just eternity, but John 10, 10, whenever Jesus said, I came that they may have life and life to the full, like it, we're not waiting for heaven one day, like we get to have it today, but whenever we never reflect, we just we just buy this counterfeit world that we live in mm-hmm. um, instead of the kingdom of heaven. And so- well, and yeah. I would say if you're if you're not passionate about growing, if you say, hey, you know, I, I know I should grow, but I just really don't feel like it. I would just wonder, hey, who I would ask the question, who in your life are you helping to take their next steps? It's not just about you taking your next step, but it's about helping other people. There are some things that, you know, they're very passionate about. I have some. And we have people who are really passionate about specific scripture or teaching style or um, and things in the spiritual. But because they're not teaching it to anybody, all they're looking for is for somebody else to just feed that passion and fuel they have. And without having that fresh water of somebody you're bringing alongside you in your walk with Jesus and in your growth, man, it inspires and challenges you to walk even more so in the things that you're passionate about. But if we're not teaching somebody else, we're not helping somebody else along, we will notice a lack of need for and honestly, a lack of passion for taking our own next steps. And especially if you are a parent, you have been given, God has given you, they are his, they're not yours. You have the privilege to steward God's children in an intimate, specific way. It is important that your children see you growing and taking your next steps with God and that you're helping them take their next steps too. And that means like you're going to fail and that's okay because you're not perfect, but failing like I was in the kitchen the other day, I was so mad and I was just mad and I stopped and I just said, Holy Spirit, I need your help. I'm so mad. And Lord, I, I just want to, I just need your help. And JL says, don't you feel stupid for doing that? And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, you just prayed out loud to ask the Holy Spirit for help. And I I looked at her and I just said, JL, mom needs help walking like Jesus. I need help. And so I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to help me. And it was this amazing moment that God used. Mm -hmm. I was failing and I knew I was failing. And I asked God for help in my kids saw me ask God to help me. It doesn't mean I'm perfect, but what I did was by obeying God and asking him for help, I was able to teach JL how to take her next step. And the next time she was frustrated, I said, hey, let's just stop. Let's just ask the Holy Spirit for his help. And it wasn't a um, a hypocritical thing for me to ask JL to pursue Christ in the midst of her feelings. It was a, hey, that's something mom's learning how to do too. Let's take our next step with Jesus together. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are, they're, they're really passionate about somebody else's growth. Mm. They're really passionate about their kids or their friends or somebody else's growth. I, and actually, this may, this won't come across great, but me and one of my friends, uh, we were discussing how we can help another friend of ours um, get in better shape, physical shape, because it's impacting their life. And and the, my friend was like, well, if if they could just do it for this person, if they could just do it for their kid, and and I, I really do feel strongly, like that's never a good enough why. That's never, because if you're doing it for somebody else, they're not always around you. It, it's, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a great enough temptation. You need a self-revelation, like a self, like, hey, I'm doing this because God has called me to do this. Um, mm-hmm. And so, again, so I bring that back to what I said. A lot of us are really passionate about somebody else's growth, a spouse, a kid, a friend, or whatever. Well, in, unless you're passionate about what God has called you to do, like what you said with JL, like JL learned from you allowing God to grow you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's going to be our best way even to help people. And so if you're passionate about somebody else's growth, somebody, and then, then grow yourself, and reflection is a massive way to do that. Well, if you want to win your world, you know what people notice is transformation. They notice change. And when you stop doing something you've done forever and you start functioning different or you're walking in more gifts of the spirit, you're, you know, those fruits of the spirit of love and joy, peace, patience, kind of, you know, all of that, if you're becoming more like Christ and they haven't been around you in a little bit and then they're around you again and they're like, whoa, you're different. What's And you say, oh man, God's just been working on me and I've just, he's really asked me to do this and so I'm obeying God and it's changing my life. All of a sudden you have this opportunity to 
to win your world, to talk about the power of God, that he is not dead, that he's transforming you. And that is what allows us to see the gospel move forward is not just, well, I gave my life to Jesus and I just have to tell the people about who Jesus is. Yes, we do. Your life, though, should be a billboard of transformation. And you can go back and do say, man, I used to do this this way. I'm so sorry. I've had a revelation that that's not what God's called me to do and how he's called me to be. And this is what I'm going to do now. And by our reflection is not just for us to have revelation. That's part of it. But we get to take that revelation and it forces us to a what is next. Yeah. What is next? Well, oftentimes what is next when we have those moments of revelation after reflection is I need to go have a conversation. I would say seven out of 10 times my reflection, I spend time with the Lord. He's changed my heart. He's changed my mind. He's exposed me to myself. Usually I need to go and have a conversation Yeah, and it leads whether I need to go ask for forgiveness. I need to offer forgiveness. Um, I need to offer compassion. I need to give a gift. Like there are things that God's going to ask you to do when he exposes you to that. And I am just so grateful that I have those moments with the Lord because it means that he's not done with me yet. Yeah. And that is a good, it is not a bad thing. Conviction is a gift because God is telling you, hey, there's more for you. So a lot of times I used to, out of shame, when I would reflect, I would, I would, shame would tell me, gosh, you're, you're the worst. You're not good enough. What a fool. And, but conviction, the gift of God tells me, oh, there's so much more. I have so much more for you. And the more is not just for me. It's not just for Zach. John 10, 10 is for every single person who cho- who chooses to deny themselves, pick up their cross and follow Jesus. That's right. And one other thing, and I'm going to give you, we're going to give you a list of things that you can reflect on um, and whenever you have some time and, and we'll put it in the show notes too. So you have it, but the um, I just want to encourage you. Whenever you start the uh, the discipline of reflecting for what God's doing in your life, mm-hmm. then you can do the reflection of what God what God wants to do in other people's lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, so before we talk to people about people, we talk to God about people. And so I think it's a big deal. I think that's massive. Mm-hmm. There's not many people who are going up to other people and saying, "Hey, I was praying for you." Yeah, I just feel like I have this revelation from God. Um, it's just a really intimate thing. And yeah. so uh, really powerful. But <clears throat> let me give you a couple of things. And then we'll even link uh, some pa- maybe a past episode we've done on uh, the the on growth plans uh, just to give you some things to see. But let me give you some areas to reflect on. Faith or your walk with God. Marriage, if, if you're married, that's, that's a, a big one. Uh, f- family, wh- whatever part of the family that you have. Uh, work. So wherever you're working, whatever that is, if you're a student, that's that's what that is for you. Digital, which I think is a big one. Mm. Um, what's your digital life look like? Um, what are you viewing? What are you looking at? Um, how much time are you Ooh, looking at it? Boy, uh, isn't that, that screen time thing? Isn't yeah. that convicting? Yes. Um, ministry, so like your purpose, like what God's called you to do, how you doing on that. Financial, uh, no matter where you're at, are you tithing? You are you, are you doing what God's called you to do? Mm-hmm. Social, your friends, are you surrounding yourself with the right people? Are you making time for people? Do you have a lost person or two in your life? Your attitude, how's your attitude doing when you're with people? When you're not with people, your internal dialogue, um, how how creative are you being? Are you are you leaving space for God to speak to you in that way? Um, and then and then physical. How is your how's your physical life doing? How how, how are you doing with your health? Uh, how are you honoring God? So, those are some areas to reflect on. And I want to bring it back to that question I asked: What is the single thing, if if improved on, would make the greatest difference in your life? Pick that, make it the focus of your reflection, mm-hmm. and then go from there. And it's a great, honestly, you may be asking that question for the first time. It's a great jumping off point for your word for 2024. Yeah. So this is, I mean, people are all right. I'm, I'll, you may have already been thinking about that, but hey, you're, you're, less than two weeks away from the end of the year. 2024 is coming. How exciting. Um, what are you going to, what's going to be your word for the year? And this is one way that you can stop and hear from God on where you can grow the most in 24. Yeah. Well, we love you so much. And we know that your purpose is to win the world. And that was God given. And so we're thrilled to serve that. We love you. We'll see you next year. Next Next week. week. Next week. See ya.